Welcome back, Dragons, to our fraction and decimal computation review. I appreciate you working with me, trying to study for your upcoming exam. Where we left off last was number seven, so we're going to resume. We're going to go about 15 more minutes, and then whatever we can't finish in this video, you'll have to do independently, and I will show you the answer key on Monday. Okay, so we are still with addition of decimals here, where we add and subtract decimal stack. I just need some new paper. We're going to look at these numbers here. I want to point out a test-taking strategy while we have a moment. You can see that the whole number here is 86, and the whole number here is 67. Think about an estimate for those numbers. If you were to put 86 and 67 together, would you get 1,535? Would you get 900 or 800? Would it even go that high? It's not going to happen. So technically, through process of elimination, you could take out the answers that are totally illogical. But for the sake of knowing how to do the computation correctly, I'm still going to walk you through the um, algorithm. So we're going to line up the decimals, which means we're lining up the place values accordingly. I can go ahead and put placeholders in to make sure that our alignment is correct. Simple addition here, bring down your decimal. Voila. And that is A, which we predicted it to be A because the others were far, far too big. Excellent. Subtraction, you're still going to stack your decimals. Be careful with your borrowing. We all make that mistake, even adults. So I'm going to line this up. We got 75, and we're going to take away 8 and 47 hundredths. At this point, I have no choice but to put placeholders. Now, I could use some test-taking strategies here and see who could I eliminate. If I have 75 take away just 8, just look at 75 take away 8. Could it be 600? 75 take away 8, could it be 77? These are feeling not logical. 75 take away 8 could be 66. 75 take away 8, is it going to be 7? If you look at just the whole number portion, you can narrow down your options. I predict the answer will be B. Let's see if we borrow correctly. 0 can't take away 7, but I can't borrow from here. But I can go all the way over here. I'm going to regroup. I'm going to take the 5, make it a 4, which can make that one a 10. This 10 can now become a 9 and make that one a 10. 10 subtract 7 is 3, 9 subtract 4 is 5, bring down your decimal. 4 can't take away 8. So I'm going to regroup from the 7, going to make that a 6, make that a 1. 14 take away 8 is 6, 6 take away nothing is 6, 66 and 53 hundredths. So our prediction was correct. Fantastic. 10. Let's look at our prediction first. 751 take away 367. I feel like three or, three or four hundred would make sense. Seven thousand does not make sense. Seven hundred doesn't even really make sense. Three hundred and eighty-three seems reasonable. Thirty-eight feels too small. My prediction is the answer will be C. placeholder. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to regroup as needed. Bring down the decimal. Three eighty three and fifty two hundredths. That was a lot of regrouping. I hope you tried that one independently first. Taking a look at eleven. 
If you haven't tried these independently, please pause the video and make an attempt. All right, seven can't take away eight. And try to recruit from here. That can't work with that. Try to recruit from there. Let's see. Nine. Bring down my decimal. Five. Let's see if our answer seems reasonable. Two sixty six subtract two fifteen could be about fifty or forty. They're all fifty, fifty one, fifty one, fifty. They're all super tight in their numbers. There. We got a. Let's see if we punch that in the calculator if we're completely accurate. 266.37, take away 215.38, yes. All right, now we are going to multiplication world. Yay, the crowd goes wild. I'm going to review with you how to do this. Basically, when I taught you the proper procedure, we took the decimals out to put the decimals back in. But that's just to emphasize how the power of 10 works. We've got 4 and 25 hundredths being multiplied by 96 hundredths. Multiply and divide decimals slide. Multiply and divide decimals slide. Now, to get the decimal out of there and to make these look like whole numbers, I'd have to multiply by 10 to the second power, which would be a double scoot there. You're really shifting the digits is what's happening mathematically. I'd have to shift twice here by multiplying by the other power. Now I can multiply as I do with normal or typical whole numbers. We like whole numbers. Okay, I'm going to start in the ones place, which is going to give me the ones place partial product right here. Six times five is 30, put down the zero, carry to three. Six times two is 12, plus three is 15, put down the five, carry the one. Six times four is 24, plus one is 25. I have taken care of the ones place partial product. Now I'm going to work on the next partial product. I like to cross out the ones that carried over before so I don't get mixed up. Since I've already worked out the ones place, I'm going to put a placeholder here for where the ones would have existed because its entire partial product now exists in this row. 9 times 5 is 45. Put down the 4. I mean, put down the 5, carry the 4. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 4 feels like 22. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 2 is 38. Cross that out. I took care of the tens place. This place value is really just going to create a row of zeros, so it's completely unnecessary. Now what do I do now with my partial products? If you said add them, you are correct. I'm going to add my partial products. And we need to figure out where the decimal is going to go. I had to multiply by 10 to the second power twice. So that means I need to divide by 10 to the second power twice. So divide by 10 to the first power, second power, third power, fourth power. Mariah Fuller and Kelsey Bidwell. Mariah Fuller and Kelsey Bidwell. Please come to the front office to pick up an item. Mariah Fuller and Kelsey Bidwell. Please come to the front office to pick up an item. Now let's analyze which of these answer choices most closely resemble the answer we, we got to. So we got four and eight hundredths. But it has a bunch of placeholders after. We need to ask ourselves how much we need. Does it look like 408? 40.8? 40,800? Or 4.08? If you said D, you are correct. It most resembles this one. I am going to double check our work on the calculator here. So, we've got this one times this one. Yep, we did it. Good job, dragons. Let's keep going. we got about six more minutes together for the review. 
We're going to move over to 13, which is a whole number times a rational number. It's almost 535 times 10, so you could make a really good judgment call here. What would 535 times 10 look like? It would be about 5,000 something. So the only thing that looks reasonable is probably answer C. Let's test it out. Let's do our work. I don't need to change 535. There's no decimal in it. I don't need to move anything. I need to multiply by 9 and 84 hundredths. This is going to stay the same. But this, if I multiply by 10 to the second power, I can temporarily move the decimal out, which will create a whole number, which we're more comfortable multiplying with. So now I'm going to multiply these two whole numbers, starting with the partial product of the ones place. 4 times 5 is 20. Put down your 0, carry your 2. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. 5 and 4 make 20, 21. Good. Done with the 4, cross out the carryovers, place value, placeholder. 8 times 5, 40. 8 times 3, 24, plus 4 would be 28. Put down the 2. Let's see. Put down the 8, carry the 2. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 2, 42. All right, finished with my 8. Cross those out. Now I'm only in the hundreds place. I only have one more partial product to go. Partial product for the ones place, partial product for the tens place. Now we're going to do partial product for the hundreds place. I'm doing fantastic. Nine times five. Well, I can't put that here because I need to put some placeholders. That was the ones place, tens place. Nine times five is 45. Put down the five, carry the four. Nine times three is 27 plus four. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Put down the one, carry the three. 9 times 5 is 45, plus 3 is 48. Put down 8, put down 4. You have all your partial products. Now you add. We need to get the decimal into the right home. Before we multiply by 10 to the second power, now we need to divide by 10 to the second power. 10 to the first, 10 to the second. 5,264 and 40 hundredths. Is anything resembled to, on the answer key, 5,264 and 40 hundredths? Sure is. I believe that was my original prediction. It means we're doing good. I'm going to test it out here. Voila. It is a match. We have done well. Okay. One more problem to do together before our time is up. And I actually think it would be best for us to do a division problem together. So let's look at, I'm going to leave room for 14 for later. Let's look at 15 together. Let's see if we all remember the steps of the division. We're going to put 84 into 2,469 and 6 tenths. I know. When we did decimal division, we moved some decimals around. We did. But you only move the decimals if you have to. This divisor is a whole number. So don't do anything. Don't move anybody. If the divisor is a whole number, leave it alone. I'm going to take this decimal, rise it up here. The first question you ask yourself is, how many times is 84 going to 2? It can't. How many times is 84 going to 24? It can't. How many times can 84 go into 246? Not sure. I'm guessing either two or three times. I have to test it out. I don't have this memorized. I do believe three is going to be too big. 
And that's not going to work. I'm going to go with two. 168. Okay. So what's happening here is I'm doing 84 can go into 246 two times. Two times 84 is 168. And then I'm going to subtract. Remember with this, it's the divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat. Devious monkeys swipe bananas repeatedly. Okay. Okay, we're going to ask ourselves how many times 84 can go into 789. I have no idea. Um, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. It's for the eight or nine. I'll go on a long shot here and try nine, which I think is going to be, well, maybe it might work out. Nine. 72, 73, 74, 75, 756. There's a good chance here. 756. So notice my thinking here is I'm just testing out numbers that can multiply together. This was multiplication here, here, and here. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to bring this all the way down. 84 goes into 336. I'm going to test again. That's nice. You missed some of the work here, but I tested 84 times 4. Got 336, which means this decimal is going to be able to stop. Do you remember the word for decimals that can stop? You said terminating, you are correct. 29 and 4 tenths. Let's see if that's an answer choice. 29 and 40 hundredths is the same as 29 and 4 tenths. We like it a lot. I'm going to test it on my calculator. Perfect. Remember that zero is a placeholder. He's not actually holding any value, so he does not change the value as indicated by the calculator. You've done an excellent job. This gives you a few more questions to work on completely independently, but I appreciate you joining me and studying for your upcoming exam. Have a good weekend, Dragons.